please. Marion. Amarion. Amarion, sorry. Can I ask you both to describe the fourth and five touchdown pass? And Shadur, first with you, what did you see? Because every replay I saw, there was there wasn't any opening there. If you found one. Can you sort of describe what you saw and then maybe <coughs> Uh, really just trusting the play call. Uh, OC coach, he um he made the call. We just got to execute it. That's it. Starting off, we executed plays early and often. We was here and there, and then we you know we had a couple penalties. Uh, so we can't afford to keep doing that when we play these better teams. And yes, I'm proud of him for being able to step up and knowing it's that moment. His time was coming, and uh, he put it on display for y'all. Um, pretty much the same thing she does say, you know, just trusting in the play, you know, we, we go over those plays every day, you know, just building confidence with each other, and, you know, just believe I can make that play. So, you know, it's all about trusting the teammates. Were you screened on that play by the defensive back? Um, not really. He kind of just stepped in front of me, and, you know, I took it back side, and I just went and tacked the ball. Hey, Brian. Well, Marion, what was it like to just have the game you had today? Oh, man, it was crazy, you know. Honestly, last night, I dreamed about playing like this, you know. I just dreamed I'd come out here and destroy, and I did it. So, you know, all praise to God. Man, go ahead. Shadur, Matt Smith, 104.3 The Fan. You want to just take us through the last six minutes? You guys got the ball back, I think, like 5.58 with one timeout left. It felt like maybe there's some communication issues or maybe just took a long time to get things in. What was going on there? Uh, really, we just, all 11 players on the field wasn't going to execute that exact play call. So my thing is, I'd rather not... I'd rather take our time, so what, rather than have a negative play and stuff like that. So that goes on me for not controlling the offense and not controlling uh, everybody knowing what to do in that specific play. But that's why I took And You know, sometimes I took runs on some plays because it wasn't the great lift that we needed regardless of anything. We just want to play a real clean game. And it's things we could always go back and do better. Y'all on the outside, y'all, y'all, everybody has opinions of what we could do, but y'all not in the moment. Y'all not seeing what we seeing. Y'all don't know uh, that that wasn't gonna work for that. So what's our change up? We gotta do something else to keep it going, keep us in tempo, and have another positive play. So that's why we was really going slower, and I put a lot of that on me. You know, coach, he's really a fast tempo guy, but I slowed it down, and that's just that's just on me. Eric Grofer. You just in that vein real quick, you talked about you ran the ball, you checked into some runs. You guys ran the football in the hole much better today. Mm-hmm. What did you see out of the running game, and do you think there's some stuff to take forward? It wasn't even what I seen. It was basically just follow the keys, understand what, what call is called, and all of us having a uh, understanding of what the play call is and execute it. These are the same plays we've been running uh, forever. Like, everybody runs power, everybody runs zone. Like, that's what it is. It's about just the players executing it. So I feel like today we had a better mindset and understand, okay, we got to execute these plays for them to be able to work, and that's what we did. We just got to do it quicker. Shador, uh, Tyler King, Denver Gazette. What have you seen from Omar in in, uh, in practice that has led to the confidence that you had in him today? Because there was, I think, the one play in the fourth quarter you just threw, and he wasn't looking, and he turned around and it kind of popped right in his chest. What has led to the confidence in him in practice? Well, that was, that's an anticipation throw. That was where I know where he's gonna be and I trust he's gonna do that. And um, all it is is I've been telling him, I said, bro, I need you to step up even from day one, whenever he was just out in summer workouts and stuff. And I told him, I said, bro, you could be a, bro, you could be a big p- part of the offense or you could just have a freshman year and just wait. You know what I'm saying? So it's up to you and I'm, and I'm glad he finally came and uh, understand who he is as a player and understand like, you know, the level, uh, everybody's human. Everybody can be beat, and he has what it takes to be able to go out there and dominate. So I'm happy he was able, in, in, in one of the biggest games of the season, able to go out there and do that. Roderick, Adam, Mr. Tiger, 24-7 Sports. When did you find out you were going to get the start, and what was it like getting out there against a quarterback like Caleb Williams? Um, I found out earlier this week. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a shocker to me because being a grad transfer, I got experience, so I was ready for the moment. I can tell you this whole week, I probably wasn't able to sleep a lot. I was waiting for the middle of the night, thinking about it, and just playing against a quarterback like Caleb Williams, man. That's a dream. It's a, it's a dream, man, playing against the Heisman quarterback from last year. It's a dream. I, I wouldn't want to be nowhere else than where I was today. I felt like I gave everything I had. There's still some stuff we got to correct as a defense, but overall, man, it was a dream come true, man. 
Mark Kisla, Denver Post, for sure. Your attitude and the team's attitude, it's 34 to seven with just a, a minute left in the first half. And second, you played against the best quarterback, college quarterback in the country. How do you think you fared? Wait, say that one more time. How do you personally? No, I'm saying the first part. You're down 34 to seven yeah. with a minute left in the first half. What's your attitude at that point at the team's attitude? Plays play for what it is, understand um, they just executed their plays, that's why they was up. We didn't execute our plays and that's why we weren't. Uh, it goes again like in practice, like you just can't get bored with the easy things. Uh, we just had to lock in and understand, look, this is not going to be a, a recap of what happened last week and we're just not going out like that. So we got to, whatever it takes, and that's, that was the whole motto this week and that's how I prepared mentally, like whatever it takes, uh, we'll do it and just put everything on the line. So. Really just getting in that zone and having everybody get in that zone off rip and off the beginning, then that's what will help us, you know, have not get in those great deficits, especially when you're playing a good offense, a great quarterback. Hmm? I mean, I feel like my stage is my stage. <laughs> you know, I don't think uh, he's a great player, but it's not, it's not oh, I'm on his stage and anything like that. Like. You know, we got the attention, we got everything we need. I'm I'm comfortable. I'm I'm good on, you know, how everything I'm doing. So it's not really a stage, it's just a big game. That's it. I feel like every every game it was millions of viewers and everything. So uh the stage is for y'all to set and stuff like that. Or just to go out there and play against human beings. Um, for Roderick, uh, Jack Carlo, Buffalo's wire. Um just what changed for you guys defensively? I think you allowed about half as many yards um you would see in the second half. Just what changed for you guys? Um I just feel like we, we was able to play together. I feel like the first half where everybody was running around, the energy was high. And once we finally came together in the second half and everybody calmed down and focused on their keys and had their eyes in the right place, there there wasn't no stopping us, man. We were able to steamroll and get that get that get that train rolling and get the ball back in his hand. That's all we were trying to do, man. Ariel Lucido, nine news for Shador. Uh very simply first, do you believe in moral victories? Say it again? Do you believe in moral victories? Do you think this was a moral victory? I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> then let's move on from there. Uh, what came together for you guys in the second half? And, like, why do you, do you believe that this second half of the game is who this team really is? I mean, it's going to get boring about what I'm saying because it's the same thing. Like, uh, to football, all, all it's about is executing and getting into that zone, getting into that mind frame off the beginning. So it's really – those who don't understand, you won't know. Those who play sports will understand, like getting into that. Uh, you can't hear nobody, but just focus on your job and assignment and trust the guy next to you. I'll trust him all line. I'll trust him uh, all the receivers and stuff. There's things they're good at, things they're bad at. But uh, play to everybody's strengths and really just get back with Coach, um, Coach Blue and just talk about what we like, what we don't like, what we're getting great looks out of, and he called a great game. For a while.